my friend David here from Learn Christmas Lighting and in this video we're going to talk about video adding video to your display and in particular adding video monitors okay so if you've got an old TV projector around something like that or you just want to play video or even just X lights effects on a screen then this is for you okay when it comes to playing X lights effects or videos within X lights as part of your Christmas light show, uh, there are two primary methods of doing it depending on your needs. The simplest and probably easiest to get started with, number one, is using X schedule with a full length video file that you built your sequence off of. Okay. Um, the other way that you can do it and have multi-monitors, um, you can have multi-monitors actually technically through X schedule if they're next to each other. Um, but if you want to be able to play back multiple files on multiple monitors, or you want uh, to do X lights type effects on your screen, like I'll demo here in a couple minutes, or you want to do video files that may or may not match the length of your sequence uh, perfectly, then you're going to be using FPP. Okay, so in this video, I want to walk through these two ways, walk through some of the caveats of both, and show you how to make them work. So, first off, I'm going to go and I'm just going to create a new sequence here in X Lights. I want to create a musical sequence. And when it comes time to choose the music, I want to choose a video file. Now, this one might be kind of silly because I'm just going to pull something out of my, uh, out of my folder here. And so we're just going to go, this is a picture of me testing some floodlights. Okay. Set your speed. I'll just do 20 frames per second, quick start. And now the audio looks kind of silly because it's literally just me testing floodlights for two minutes. Um, so there's some wind noise. I say a couple things. Um, I'm actually going to turn off my volume, um, but, uh, but it has the audio here of that video in time. And so I could just go, and I can, you know, for my prop in my show, I can run an effect. I can save it. Sure, we'll call it that. Pixel whatever, whatever dot X sequence, and we're good to go. Okay. So that's the first step is you're going to sequence and your video file is going to be what you sequence off of. So you put the audio, the song you want to use in your video file. You make it the full length of the sequence, it can go, I mean, you can have the video go black at times, right? But it needs to be a file that's the exact length that you're gonna sequence. You use it to sequence, and then we go to Tools X Schedule. I will go in here and I will go switch to X Lights folder. I will add FSCQ plus video, that's important. Then I go find it, where in the world is it? <laughs> It's in, uh, let's see, it's in documents, X lights, and then I'm in AC lights test, pixel, blah, 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 it's with an 8.4. And then I want to go and choose my video. So I go and I find my video file now. If I was doing this for real, I would make sure my video file was indeed in my, uh, in my setup. And I believe we said ends in 8.4 for that one position window we now hit and so this is the size of the video content so like when i'm talking about running a show off x schedule with multiple monitors often i'm going to maximize this on a separate monitor um, i'm only recording one monitor right now so you know that's that uh if you wanted to get rid of the windows toolbar you know you do that go to the taskbar settings hide that maximize the window be good to go for the sake of closing the window, once I get started, uh, I'm going to just make it this big and press OK so that I can stop the sequence here in a second <laughs> so that it will work. OK, then we go ahead and we press OK. We've got it in our playlist. We're good to go. We can now play this. And it should play nice and smoothly. OK, if it doesn't play smoothly like this one is not playing super smooth. Uh, go back and check the X Lights manual as to file types and sizes um, and correct it. I know I've done this successfully before. I think you do need to watch carefully what type of video file it is, and it should work just fine and dandy. Um, but let's go ahead and do it via FPP. 
So this works great if you're using X schedule. Um, I've used it before and had no problems with it. I'm not sure why I'm getting flickering today, but I believe I'm using the wrong type of video file and that's what's causing that. So now let's talk about setting up in FPP. What we're going to do is we're going to set up what we call a virtual matrix. Now you can technically basically use the same approach that I just used for X schedule and do that in FPP. Um, but uh, it says in the FPP manual that it may not keep sync. It may start up kind of jittery or, or kind of jump. And so I don't want to recommend that to you if it's not something that's going to work reliably. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is define a virtual matrix. So I've got a matrix set up here in X lights. Okay. That starts at channel one. Again, it would start at whatever channel you wanted to start at. I would start it at an empty channel, either at the start or end of your display. Um, I made this one 192 by 112, but I'm actually going to change that. So I'm going to do this at, um, let's think, let's just do it at 192 by 108. So basically what I'm doing, sorry if you hear my kids outside, uh, basically what I'm doing is I'm taking a 1920 by 1080, you know, HD type display, and I'm cutting it down, okay, so that it is much smaller. Um, the maximum sizes for FPP virtual matrices are listed in the manual, but you're not going to be able to do this in full HD. Okay. If you need full HD, which somebody has to be pretty close to the, the display generally for it to look good for you to really need that. Uh, if you want to do that, it's going to have to happen through X schedule or technically there could be some other ways to trigger things through stage lighting or stage video type programs, but I digress. So we set that up. 192 by 108 um, as the size. You want to set it up horizontal or vertical, starting location. We'll we'll check all that in a couple minutes. Um, drag it out so it kind of looks like a TV. Save. And then we could sequence. So now that's changed in size on this sequence. And so we've got that going. Uh, but instead of the swirl, the galaxy, I'm going to do something we can see, which is going to be bars because bars are very easy to see um, if it's going in the right direction, et cetera, et cetera. So we're just gonna start, we'll make it the whole length, but then we'll make it move faster. Boom, there we go, save that. Awesome, and then, so then what we're gonna do is we will go ahead and uh, go to controllers, discover, this is what I like to do to find my FPP controllers because it just plain works. And then um, it's got all my channels from my matrix. It found it. Um, so it assigned my matrix model. It's got the channels correct. That's wonderful. Uh, DDP is great. So we can leave that alone. And then I am going to go to tools, FPP connect, send my sequence. I had a previous test sequence two and then we will have to turn on the virtual matrix but for right now we'll just leave it as it is upload hopefully this will work without setting up the matrix first I think it will so now we open up our FPP so you can just double click on it here in the uh, controllers tab and under other outputs here I'm just gonna refresh so I have the latest we're going to add, um, select a type, be virtual matrix. Size is going to be width, like we said, is uh, 190 by 108. No invert ports is FBO, scaling hardware. Okay, that's all fine. Leave that alone. And we want to make it active and then save. Now, before you do that, hook up your Pi to a monitor as I did. And you might be able to see on there, there's a little bit of text on it. So before you have video input set up, you should see that text and that just verifies like your Pi's hooked up, your HDMI cable works, your monitor accepts the signal. It just lets you know that everything's working. If you plug in your monitor or projector and see no signal, um, even before you set this up, that's a sign that there's something else wrong in your video system, that the HDMI cable's bad, 
the Pi's HDMI output is bad, you know, it could happen, um, et cetera, et cetera. You're on the wrong input on the TV or a projector, right? Uh, things like that. So once I save this, I am going to get a blank screen. So I hit save, FPPD, restart required. So I hit restart. And when I do that and it does restart, you'll see it restart on the TV behind me. You may be able to see it there. Yeah, there it goes. And then we're just going to get a blank screen on output. Okay. Um, that's all we're going to get. But we can go to display testing, status control display testing, enable test mode. Boom. And we should see our thing light up. Uh, you can go, like you can chase and stuff and see it, whatever. Um, you can do a fill, whatever. But either way, it lights up. We're happy. Okay. So then we just go ahead and we can run our effect on there. So I sent the effect up. Um, so I'll go to standalone mode here. It'll work in standalone or master. Uh, a virtual matrix will work. I don't believe it works. It may work as a... Uh, stop this as a remote just play this one Let's see does it show up yeah well, cool oh and it's showing the video actually because I use the video file as my file which means that um, so this right now is using the video file because I created the I actually created the sequence with the video file but here's one that I created um, earlier it might have different channels though. Stop. Stop. It might have different channels. So we'll see if it works or not. Yeah, it is different channels. Um, so we'll just go to bridge mode just to show you that it works. So we're in bridge mode. Once this reboots um, or gets all set up, you'll see the status screen. We can then turn on output from good old X lights. Press update, see the numbers go up, woohoo. And so now we should see things on our screen. If it doesn't look right, like mine here, something is configured wrong. So check your output screen here. Um, 190 by 108, is that what I did? Start channel one. 192 by 108, that still shouldn't change it. But we'll see. So what I'm seeing here, which is weird, is if I go into test mode, I see it work correctly. And if I look close at the TV, just to point this out, I get lines of RGB, 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 which tells me, okay, we're good. That's the chasing RGB. It might be hard to see here because every pixel is different, okay? So I know that my sizing is right here in FPP. I know we're rocking and rolling there. So that tells me something is amiss here in X lights. I may have gotten these mixed up. 108 by 192. Save, go to sequencer. Add the bars back in. And in this case, what I'm seeing, okay, I've run into this before, is that the auto sizing is not working here in X lights because the auto sizing is only sending one universe for this model when really it's using uh, 62208 channels. And so what it's doing is actually cutting off. And so what I'm gonna do is just override the input. Um, so for DDP, we should be seeing, yeah, we only have one through 512. And so we've got to override that here in the x lights settings. So here on channels, we have, what was our number again? Instead of 512, we have 62208. 62208, excuse me. And then that should send it. We'll find out here in a hot second. Yes, and there we go. So that's what it was. I missed that one sometimes, especially when using the DDP, because um, it does not automatically, there's not really a way to like use the visualizer or to, there's no real way to bring in the number of channels for your virtual matrix. You do have to do that manually. But once you set that up here in X lights with DDP, the nice thing is on the FPP side, you just hit update, you'll see the start address update. There's no DDP configuration on the FPP side. And then you're free to sequence your heart out. If for any reason your matrix is in the wrong direction, 
then you can update that in the layout tab. Um, you can also invert the display output. So you flip it basically on the channel outputs page. There's an invert switch um, that'll allow you to invert that, uh, which I believe is for when the projector's hung, it just flips it upside down. You can also do that in a projector, but of course, if it's a TV display, it's not going to let you do that. Um, and then here you can switch horizontal vertical. So you can switch it to vertical strips. I'll show you that here. Um, if your TV was mounted sideways, right? So here next, like that's supposed to be going up and down and there it's going side to side um, on the screen and you can switch it like so. But anyways, that's how to do video um, in X lights, either virtual matrix or through X schedule. Um, either way can work depending on your needs. The biggest key is to know what you're looking for and know what you want the end result to be. And then these are the steps to make it work. So if you enjoyed this and maybe you're brand new to this, maybe you're confused about how to get started with your first Christmas light display, I wanna send you a free guide that will walk you through the three things I wish I knew before I began my very first Christmas light display. It's yours for free over at learnchristmaslighting.com. Be sure you subscribe to your so you get the latest, and we'll see you in our next video here on the channel. Thanks.